to the latest edition of the Stephen A. Smith Show, coming at you as I love to do every weekday over the airways of ESPN Radio and ESPN News, 250 plus markets across the United States of America. Check your AM FM listing nearest you, plus ESPN Radio and Sirius XM, Channel 80, plus ESPN Radio Simulcast over the live national television airwaves of ESPN News. Number to call up as always is 888-SAY-ESPN. That's 888-729-3776. The Stephen A. Smith Show is being brought to you by mycomputercareer.edu, training for a better life. Time for Straight Talk brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. We know what the lead story is today. There's no surprise here. I'm proud of my New York Yankees taking two or three from the Los Angeles Dodgers, smacking 61 home runs in the month of August. Aaron Judge hitting a home run in each of the three games in this series. I'm very, very happy about that. I like the fact that they smacked around Clayton Kershaw a little bit. Getting three home runs on him. I'm very, very happy about that. Because if the Dodgers and the Yankees were to meet in the World Series, obviously the Yankees, even though that's not the case yet, I anticipate will have home field advantage and they will be en route to a championship. Although I think the Houston Astros are going to get in their way and derail their hopes because they have better pitching. But that's beside the point. That's a subject for another day. Subject for another day. The White House signing in with the Lakers. Subject for another day. Ezekiel Elliott in his contract with Jerry Jones and the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys predicted, Stephen Jones predicted, that Ezekiel Elliott will be taken care of before opening day on September 8th. We will discuss that later. We'll discuss that later. We know what the news is today. Courtesy of the great one himself, Adam Schefter, our resident NFL insider for ESPN, insider extraordinaire for ESPN. We learned new Saturday night that Andrew Luck of the Indianapolis Colts, the 29-year-old quarterback, entering his seventh season of playing. I mean, he's done seven years, but he missed the entire 2017 season. But entering his seventh season of action as a star quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts, drafted first overall in the 2012 NFL Draft, that Andrew Luck. D'Andrew Luck that threw for 39 touchdowns last year. Second in the league only to Patrick Mahomes. That Andrew Luck. D'Andrew Luck that threw for over 4,500 yards. That Andrew Luck. D'Andrew Luck that won comeback player of the year last year after missing the entire 2017 season due to his shoulder. That Andrew Luck. D'Andrew Luck that the season beforehand missed part of that season because he was out with a lacerated kidney. That Andrew Luck has decided. That at age 29, with at least a decade of a career ahead for him, in position to surpass many, many records in NFL history as a star quarterback, in position to collect in today's NFL economy at least another quarter of a billion dollars in his career, that Andrew Luck has decided. To call it quits. To end his NFL career at age 29, scheduled to be age 30 this coming September 12th. Due to a bevy of injuries, health issues, obviously. And, John, we have some sound from Andrew Luck's press conference, correct? Talking about his health, his health woos, and all of this other stuff. These are things that we have to speak on. But before we speak... It's important to hear from Andrew Luck himself about why he decided at age 29, fresh off of leading the Indianapolis coach to a divisional playoff around against the Kansas City Chiefs, having won a playoff game last year in his first game, in his first year back, playing the kind of football he's played with Frank Wright, with the best team, as far as I'm concerned, that he's had to work with since being drafted. A stout offensive line. T.Y. Hilton, the acquisition of Devin Funches. Eric Ebron is your tight end. Marlon Mack is your running back. And an offensive line led by Quentin Nelson, who's a monster at the position and is all about the business of wearing that shoehorn and protecting his quarterback. Why Andrew Luck, with his best shot, at a Super Bowl championship in his career with Chris Ballard proving to be the exceptional GM that he has been with Frank Wright proving to be a damn good head coach. 
The way he performed last year after a one and five start, got in this team to the postseason. That's fresh off of winning the Super Bowl championship as a quarterback's coach and an offensive coordinator with the Philadelphia Eagles the year before, by the way. With all of those assets available to Andrew Luck, he decides at age 29 to call it an NFL career. Listen to Aaron Andrew Luck, I'm sorry, explain the reasons behind his decision. I've been stuck in this process. I haven't been able to live the life I want to live, taking the joy out of this game. And after 2016, where I played in pain and was unable to regularly practice, I made a vow to myself that I would not go down that path again. I find myself in a similar situation. And the only way forward for me is to remove myself from football in this cycle that I've been in. The lack of progress on my ankle, and I'm in pain. I'm still in pain. I've been in this cycle, which feels like, I mean, it's been four years of this injury pain rehab cycle, and for me to move forward in my life the way I want to, it doesn't involve football. There you have it. Andrew Luck walking away from the game of football at age 29. 53 and 33 as a starting quarterback in the National Football League. 2,000 completions out of 3,290 3, attempts. Completed 60% of his passes in his career, threw for 26,671 yards in his career, 171 touchdowns, 83 interceptions. That's a better than two to one uh, uh, touchdown to turnover ratio. Uh, a quarterback rating of 89.5, which is pretty damn good. You know, a lot of people were very critical of Andrew Luck and his decision. Let me say this. As much of a fan I am as I am of RG3, the person, I was never a proponent of RG3 going number one in the draft coming out of Baylor over Andrew Luck. I knew he was a stud. I went to his, uh, his game uh, against USC in his senior year at, at Stanford, his last year at Stanford, rather, and he went up against USC at the Coliseum. I was at that game when he dropped 55 on him. I was there. And I saw this dude in, the per- in person, and I knew what a stud he was. And Andrew Luck being this dude, 6'4", 240 pounds, that's what he's listed as. First year in Indy, plays all 16 games, guides them to an 11-5 record, a wild card game. Second year, plays all 16 games, guides them to another 11-5 record and a divisional playoff game. Third year, 11-5 record, guides them to an AFC championship game. That year, he led the league throwing 40 touchdowns and just 16 interceptions. This dude had star written all over him. He had franchise written all over him and loved, loved, loved himself playing some football. That's what he was about. Thinks from Stanford, he's got some kind of architectural degree, architectural engineering degree, whatever the case may be. But he, listen, and comes from a relatively affluent family background, and uh, obviously he doesn't need the money the way uh, some of these players from disenfranchised communities may need it. That's not Andrew Luck's deal. That's not his issue. Living a good life, just getting married in March to his longtime girlfriend that he was with for the past decade. Uh, obviously, he's thinking about all of those things. So I'm not here to sit up here and tell you and adopt this mentality, Andrew Luck's a quitter. Andrew Luck's are all of these negative connotations that you want to attach to him. I disagree with that. I think when you look at Andrew Luck, the successor to Peyton Manning in Indianapolis, for him, for him to come to Indy, succeeding Peyton Manning, and to have played the way that he played, From the day he arrived in Indy, I can't say enough about him. If there was going to be a successor to Peyton Manning, I think he was a pretty damn good one. I really, really do. And I think that when you look at Andrew Luck, I'm here to tell you something right now. You can blame him all you want. Let me be very, very clear. John and everybody else listening out there, Andrew Luck is not to blame for this. I'm going to tell you who to blame. It's that damn Jim Irsay, the owner for the Indianapolis Colts. That's who's, that's who's to blame. And I'm going to tell you why you blame him. Because he did not do his job. When you got a franchise caliber quarterback, the likes of Andrew Luck, you go all out to protect him. 
You don't protect Chuck Pagano. You don't protect former GM Ryan Grigson, who should never be a GM in this in this league again. I'm not saying he should be unemployed. I'm not saying he doesn't know football. I'm not saying he doesn't deserve a check from an NFL team. But when you hear the stories that you've heard about Ryan Grigson, as it pertains to his hard-headedness, his acerbic attitude, his unwillingness to get along with certain people, whether it be the coach, scouts, other people, they want to listen. And you see what he has subjected. He spent years as the GM for the Indianapolis Colts subjecting Ryan Andrew Luck to over five years. Five years. The man was sacked 100 times in the first three. He was sacked 100 times. Andrew Luck was sacked 41 times as a rookie in 2012. 32 times his second year. 27 times his third year. Yes, there was improvement. But damn it, 100 times is 100 times, and that's only counting the times that he was sacked. It ain't counting the amount of times that he was hit. It's not an accident that everybody sits here right now raving about Chris Ballard. What did this man do? In Ryan Grigson's five years, as a general manager for the Indianapolis Colts, he drafted an offensive lineman to protect Andrew Locke and buffer a running game before the seventh round only three times. You got to be kidding me. This is your franchise, and you didn't protect them. Not nearly as well as you should have. You looked at a 6'4 frame. You looked at the 240 pounds. You looked, like those, you looked at those tree trunks for thighs and, and, and legs, and you just assumed he would be all right. Well, he wasn't. With each drop back, with each hit, this man was withering away. And Grigson didn't do enough to protect him. That's why he's out of a job with the Indianapolis Colts. That's exactly why. And as a result of it, this is where we are. Andrew Luck came into the league in 2012. By 2015, he was missing games. I think 2016 was the lacerated kidney. 2017, he had to miss the whole season due to the shoulder. And by the way, not once but twice, there was a couple of soldier surgeries. He comes back last year. He wins comeback player of the year with Frank Reich as his coach. Has his best completing percentage. Threw for the second most yards in his career with 4,593. Threw for the second most touchdowns in his career with 39. Had the greatest quarterback rating of his career at 98.7. Had the greatest QBR of his career at 71.5. But ladies and gentlemen, the most telling stat was that he was sacked 174 times in his career. Which means he was hit at least 400 times. You can sit up there and you can say whatever you want about Andrew Luck. But the fact of the matter is, that's a lot of punishment to take, man. That's a lot of punishment to take. God's coming full speed at you, and you don't even have an opportunity to brace yourself. You're throwing the football. You ain't got no time to brace yourself. You got to just throw your body to the wolves and take those hits. That's what he was doing. Took a good looking. Took a good looking. It was tough for him to keep on ticking. It was tough. Some of these hits, it's a lot to take. Then now you come into training camp. I mean, since April, got a calf injury, got an ankle injury. No OTAs, training camps. Jacoby Brissett's been practicing with the first team for quite some time. He's tired of going through this. I can't blame Andrew Luck for his decision. Everybody want to sit up there and engage in hyperbole. Oh, it takes a lot of courage, blah, 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 blah. No, listen, I ain't going to go that far, right? Look, you walked away. You want to say it takes courage to walk away? All right, that's your way of saying it, not mine. I respect the man's decision. 
I respect his right to make that decision. And I applaud Andrew Luck for the star that he was in the National Football League because make no mistake about it, he was a star. And the Indianapolis Colts were a shell of themselves without him. We'll see what they do now. They were Super Bowl contenders with him. Now that we know he's done, I promise you they aren't now. No disrespect to Jacoby Brissett. I wish him nothing but the best. Got a lot of respect for him. Like what I saw him do in New England. Like some of the moments that he's had in Indy. But I got news for you. He's no Andrew Luck. So we'll have to see what he does. But I will tell you this. I feel bad for him. Because I believe him and I believe people when they talked about his love for the game of football. And it's a damn shame it's come to this point for him. It really, really is. And my, my heart goes out to him and his family because I know he loves this game. And I have nothing negative to say. But I got news for you, which may surprise all of y'all. I got nothing negative to say about, I have nothing negative to say about the fans in Indy either. You know, on this particular day, we talk about the fans and every negative connotation we want to. You can do all of that all you want. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you something right now. I don't have that issue with the fans. I do not have that issue with the fans. To me, as much as y'all want to excoriate them and talk about classlessness and what have you, I got news for you. I think it was totally appropriate. Totally, totally, totally appropriate. Why the fans were booing. And allow me to explain. Ladies and gentlemen, if the fans, if Andrew Luck had retired in July or June or the spring, you wouldn't have got that reaction. That reaction wasn't because Andrew Luck quit and he's a quitter. That reaction was, what the hell are you doing, man? We a week away from the start of the season. Now, I haven't spoken to any Indianapolis Colts fans, but I'm willing to bet my money that's why they were booing. What the hell are you doing? We're a week and a half away from the start of the 2019 NFL season. If you were going to retire, you couldn't have done it earlier? Rather than building our hopes up, knowing that we got a Super Bowl contender, and you're going to quit now? What the hell is going on here? That's what they were doing. I want to sit up there and I had my research to look up something because I want to make sure that I put this in its proper perspective. Cause I mentioned this on my, on my television show first take, which is on ESPN every week. They morning from 10 AM to noon Eastern seven to 9 AM Pacific. Jim Brown retired at age 29. Ladies and gentlemen, when did he retire? It was July 13th, 1966. Barry Sanders for the Detroit Lions couldn't stand Coach Bobby Ross. Retired at age 31. When did he do that, ladies and gentlemen? July 27th, 1999. By the way, they were both running backs. Calvin Johnson, a wide receiver, age 30. 1,214 yards, nine touchdown passes. March 8th, 2016, he retired. July, July, and March. There is no quarterback in NFL history that we know of, correct me if I'm wrong, John, that quit a week and a half before the start of the season when you're the QB1. It's never happened. It's never happened. And if you're an Indianapolis Colts fan, I can understand why that would rub you the wrong way. I can totally understand it. You, I understand that Andrew Luck said it hurt. I get that. I understand it. And people want to talk about he did so much. He did so much. He did do a lot. He didn't win a Super Bowl now. He didn't win an AFC Championship game. He won games. He got you to the postseason, and I don't recall him doing that for free. He was getting paid to do it. He had a job to do, and he did his job. But he, he lived up to expectations. In terms of exceeding them, 
I believed he would have, but he hadn't yet. There was unfinished business. And it's perfectly within his right to step away from the game. I completely support him. I'm not going to insult his decision, nor am I going to insult him for the decision that he made. I'm simply making the point that if you are an Indianapolis Colts fan, in that moment, fans, what do they do? One of two things. They boo or they cheer. They boo or they cheer. Some people like my man Will Kane will say, oh, you know what? They could be quiet. No, that's not what fans do. Fans aren't quiet. They boo or they cheer. And this was nothing to cheer about. So what's your, what's your alternative? It's to boo. That's life. Andrew Luck does not deserve to be insulted. He does not deserve to be excoriated. He does not deserve to be raked through the coals. But in that moment, if you're an Indianapolis Colts fan, your season just went, just washed away. Everything you had hoped for involving Super Bowl aspirations and expectations and the thrill and the excitement and the, of the anticipation of it all evaporated in the wink of an eye. An emotional reaction is going to emanate from that in the moment. And it ain't going to involve cheers. So while people are quick to get on the Indianapolis Colts fans for this, I'm going to come to their defense. Now, if they acted that way today, I'd be all over them. If he had retired in July or sooner and they reacted that way, I'd be all over them. But in that moment, inside that stadium, understanding that you were walking away from the best team you've ever had at your disposal, one and a half weeks, a week and a half before the damn season begins, I can't knock the fans for reacting. And I don't think y'all should either. 888-SAY-ESPN. That's 888-729-3776. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, ESPN News. That was Straight Talk Wireless, everything for less, only at Walmart. Again, 888-SAY-ESPN. That is the number to call. By the way, people, I'm here to tell you about Zelle, a quick and easy way to send and receive money right from your banking app. If you're sending your kid off to college this fall, remember that the best care package isn't a package at all. Just send them money with Zelle. It's easy to use, and the money you send goes directly into your college student's bank account, typically within minutes if they're already enrolled. That way they can pick out the perfect care package for themselves. Look for Zelle in your banking app or get more info at ZellePay.com. Zelle, this is how money moves. Terms and conditions apply. But does he tickle your fancy? He doesn't tickle mine. Where is Michael K when I need him? Please hurry up back to the radio airways, even though my man Don Juan LaGreca can handle this because he's a hell of a radio host. But I don't trust Don. Mr. Matt. I can't listen to him. Assuage my concerns when it comes to the New York Yankees. He doesn't care about us. He doesn't care about Yankee fans. I can't do that. I'm trying to keep my cool. Trying to give the Yankees a chance. Trying to find any old which way I can come up with. To justify. What the hell is going on? And I got to tell you something right now. I'm getting very, very worried. Because I'm looking at them. And I'm saying, hey, this ain't going to cut it. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not interested in seeing the Yankees go to the postseason and lose again. Although I will acknowledge a couple of years ago when they lost to the Astros in seven games, that was some spectac- that was a spectacular baseball series to watch. It took seven to take the Yankees out, but that was something special. I have to admit that. I truly, truly do. I really, really do. So I won't front in that regard. But I'm just looking at Verland and Jericho with ERAs under three. And I'm like, damn it. Yankees don't have a chance against these brothers. Then they got Granky too. It ain't say ESPN. It's 3776 You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, ESPN News. Yankees, after they finished this series against the A's, hopefully with a win, they got to go to L.A. 
Chavez Ravine and go up against two-time reigning National League champion Los Angeles Dodgers. It's always good to see the Yankees and the Dodgers going up against each other. I'll be very interested in watching the outcome of that. But I need to see some pitching from the New York Yankees. I need pitching. Quote, term life insurance difference. Most companies give you one option, one policy, one rate. But select, quote, shops and get you up to 10 options from highly rated life insurers. For a free personalized quote, call 1-800-601-6992 or go to selectquote.com. The Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Stephen A. Smith Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Keep the heads ringing. Say what? Say what? Ha ha! If you missed any of today's opening segment, go check it out on demand in the Stephen A. Smith Podcast. Brought to you by Capital One. Capital One is reimagining banking, offering accounts with no fees or minimums that can be opened in five minutes. Capital One. Hey, hey! What's in your wallet? Capital One and a member FDIC. Also, ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Quote, buy and save on home insurance with Progressive's new home quote explorer. Only at Progressive.com. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. By the way, ladies and gentlemen, don't think for one second I haven't been nice. Because let me tell y'all something right now. Don't think for one second I, 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 I can sit up there and appreciate and respect where Andrew Luck is coming from. But let me understand something. We all know that we would not accord this level of respect to many others if they had quit at this point in time, right? We all know that, right? How many cats do you know could get away? We're receiving the love fest that Andrew Luck has received over the national airwaves over the last several hours if they had quit with a, a week and a half left in the season as a QB1. How many people you know could get away with that? I'm just saying, in the interest of fairness, Okay? This ain't just some running back, you know. And wide receiver. This quarterback. Let's just keep it real. Nick, you're live with Stephen A. What's up? Hey, Stephen. I just want to talk to you about Andrew Luck, man. Uh, I feel like a lot of people are being a little too hard on him. I personally feel like I get where you're coming from in a way. Like, we wouldn't give a pass to a lot of people, but I also feel like with people trying to tell him how he should do his how he should do his career and what he what he's going through like a lot of people don't realize going through all those injuries how depressed you could be and mental health do and you physical health like do you yeah, well I do actually I do how I've been through I've been through a uh, injury I tore my ACL my right meniscus when I was in high school um my mom has also passed away and my grandpa my so I know what it's like my, to be like depressed my, and my condolences I appreciate you and your family I appreciate you, sir. I love watching your show and it gives me a lot of uh, happiness, honestly. That's why I like calling. Um, but I just feel like that's pretty similar to what Andrew Luck's going for. Like, he's been so upset. He's been hurt physically. If he goes back out there, he's probably thinking about a lot of that stuff but, happening but, but, again. But, but, but listen to this. I understand that, and I don't disagree with you. But what, about, what, what do you think about the notion that, damn, a week and a half before the season began, as opposed to last month? You've been hurt for months. And a For week sure. and a I half totally, before, and a week and a half before the season is when you drop this news on the team. Yep, definitely not fair to the team. But with all the team backing him up like that, right? You would think it seems that they're actually like understanding where he's coming from, which is why I feel like the media and everything but, but, can kind of back but, and but, understand where they're But let me come back at well. you with this. Let me come back at you with this. Do you really, really think one of his teammates would call him out like that? Do you really think they would no, tell well, the truth about what not. they really feel? Mm, if they if they maybe. felt differently. If they felt differently, do you really, really think that would happen? Honestly, probably not. But, okay. but if why would you throw him under the bus like that when he's been like he has for Indianapolis and the team for whatever since 2012? I mean, you wouldn't throw him under the bus like that. That, that just wouldn't happen. Okay. So my point, my point basically is, is just let the man do what he wants to do and live the way he wants to live without saying, oh, he, you know. We're not well, in his shoes, is my point. Well, you know, you know, you know, nobody's going to listen to that. I appreciate your thoughts. I appreciate your comments. But you know, ain't a damn person listening to that. People are going to say what the hell they want to say. They're going to feel what the hell they want to feel. That's just how it rolls. Period. Appreciate the call, though. Thanks a lot. 888 say ESPN. It's 888 729 
3776, my man Champ from Detroit. I knew he'd call. You're live right here with Stephen A. What's up, big boy? What's up, bro? How oh, you doing? I'm good, man. I just, I'm, a, you know what? I'm sick and tired of society. They so soft today. And everybody, oh, he retired. He, he it's his wishes. It's, it's for what's best for his family. Listen, seven years in the NFL, you play six seasons. If the medical doctors say you are able to play football, you quit. And the biggest story today that no one's talking about is the Indianapolis Colts has elected to let him keep $24 million for six seasons with their organization. But in the same time, you got folks in the media night in and night out that's complaining about guys like Le'Veon Bell, Holden, Ezekiel Lett. I think every player in the NFL who feel they don't have a better deal should hold out today. They should set a standard. If you can quit and get $24 million, play down the football this year until you get paid. Plain H- and simple. Hey, H- H- Champ, I got to tell you, you know, you and I have been boys for years, and we've disagreed on several occasions. I think that's the greatest point you ever made. I, 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 can't, I, I can't deny it. I mean, I got to tell, I I I tell you something. If you think about the way for, for my audience out there, listen to what my man Champ from Detroit just said. He said they making they made all of this noise about Le'Veon Bell holding out. They made they're making all of this noise about Ezekiel Elliott holding out. But a guy that quits gets to keep twenty four million dollars. I mean, hey, you know, hey, John, I don't know, help me out. Here. I. I that's a damn good point that Champ just made, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know if we can dispute that because it's, it's perfectly. Well, listen, I'm not going to go that far because you're in pain, you're in pain, et cetera. But what I'm saying is if 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 Jim Irsay, if somebody, here's the, here's the better, how about this one, Champ? If somebody else had decided to call it quits on Jim Irsay, would he have given them $24 million? No, the biggest problem I have about this, and I'm going to say this, Barry Sanders is arguably the greatest running back of all time and the, and the greatest player to ever lace the boots up for the Detroit Lions. They made him pay money back. Calvin Johnson is arguably, pound for pound, the yep. greatest wide receiver to ever play football. They made him pay money back. Mm-hmm. I mean, it went so far with the Atlanta Falcons with Mike Vick. I think he had to pay $11 million back. You mean to tell me a quarterback who's never played in a Super Bowl, never won a Super Bowl, underachieved at Stanford, just like Jim Harbaugh at Michigan, and you mean to tell me he can walk away with $24 million and he's still walking? But at the same time, the same guys in the media is going to kill Ezekiel Elliott, Le'Veon Bell, and all these other players. Talk about the, uh, the beatdown that Cam Newton has taken over the year and played in the Super Bowl. And guess what? If he walked away right now, they would want all this money back. If Russell Wilson says, you know what? I want to be a father to my children and my wife. I quit. You think the uh, Seattle Seahawks will let him keep $80 million? Hell no. It's ridiculous. And I'm sick and tired of folks trying to change the narrative and don't want to keep it 100. Bottom line is, he played seven years in the league. He played only six seasons. He kept $24 million. And from the way I look at it, he quit. He should return the money back. Well, I will say this to you. I'm not going to question his skill set. I'm not going to question what oh, Andrew, phenomenal. I'm not going to question oh, no, no. what Andrew Luck brings to the table as a talent, and I don't think oh, that he's he, let me, let me finish. Let me finish. Let, no, no, let me finish. Special. Let me finish. Let me finish. I don't think he's cheated the Indianapolis Colts fans with his performance on the field. However, the points that you just made about that twenty-four million dollars and how it would not have been done for other players, I, I got to admit, wow. I, I got to admit, I I have no comeback for that. Barry Sanders had to give back his money. Uh, Calvin Johnson had to give back money. Michael Vick had to bring back. Now, Michael Vick's a different situation because Michael Vick didn't quit. We can't bring him into that conversation. The whole dogfighting scandal, he ended up in Livingsworth Federal right. Penitentiary. For crying out loud. We can't throw Absolutely. him in the same conversation. But Barry Sanders and Calvin Johnson, we most certainly can. We the most thing certainly about can. it, the National Football League as a whole are hypocrites. And these players who don't have the cachet like the NBA players, they sit in front of the microphones and do the dog and pony show. He did what's best for his family. But in the back of their mind, say, damn, he just collected $24 million and can still play football. But here it is. Ezekiel Elliott is getting crucified through the media from Dallas all the way to Africa. And y'all telling me the best running back in football, they need to pay that man today. 
He should not play another down for the Dallas Cowboys. Amari Cooper should hold out. Dak Prescott should hold out. It should set a precedent to the National Football hold League. On. If you can pay a guy $24 million right. to sit at home, you better pay the guys that wanted to play that can play the money right away. Let me tell you something right now. Here's where you and I do disagree, though. I have no problem with Ezekiel Elliott making getting his money because he deserves it because he's a star running back in the National Football League, probably the best there is right now. I don't have any problem of, however, him having to sweat for it. Because the fact of the matter is when you get suspended for six games, when you get called up to the commissioner's office on two or three occasions because you don't know how to act and you besmirch the franchise the way that he has by finding himself in those particular situations in the midst of Dak Prescott never missing the game, being the quintessential leader that you're supposed to be, who, by the way, is in the midst of contract negotiations with the Cowboys himself. I have no problem. I don't have any problem with Ezekiel Elliott getting his money, but I also have no problem with him having to wait for it at least a few weeks. It doesn't bother me. I'm I'm going to leave you with this one. I'm going to leave you with this one. The day Ursay said, I'm going to give you $24 million to sit at home, it don't matter what none of these players do anymore. You got to pay the guys that's willing to play. If you can sit at home with $24 million in the bank, and this is a, a, a league that does not give out guaranteed contracts, that's a slap in the play, face to every NFL player that's ever played, that's playing right now, and future players in the NFL. The union need to get – I mean, somebody need to say something. This is ridiculous. Appreciate you, Champ. It's ridiculous. Can't dis- can't, can't, cannot disagree with a word you said. My man, Champ from Detroit, appreciate you, bro. Thanks so much. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. Y'all heard, Champ. Y'all heard his argument. Damn it, he was right on point. I, I got to admit it. I wish I could say something different. I can't. I just can't do it. Andrew Luck leaves. No disrespect, but he did quit. And he gets to walk away with $24 million. But Ezekiel Elliott holding out. People got a problem with him. Le'Veon Bell holding out. People got a problem with him. He can play. Elects not to. Quits. And Ursay says, keep the $24 million. And oh, by the way, would Ursay have done that for anybody else? That's one problem you could have with Ursay. I'm going to tell you another. I'm going to tell you why he is more to blame for Andrew Luck's retirement than anybody else. I'll explain exactly what I'm talking about in a minute. You're listening live to Stephen A., ESPN Radio, ESPN News. By the way, do you have frequent heartburn? Like the kind where you have NSs stashed everywhere in case it pops up? You know what I mean. You keep some in your bag or your desk or your car. He don't deserve an opportunity to depart from the game of basketball without being unceremoniously kicked out of the league 10 games in? And by the way, it's not an accident that it's 10 games in. For those of you that don't pay attention to analytics at all, let me explain something to you about the analytic boys. I'm told they analyze and compartmentalize games in 10-game increments. So 10 games in tells you a story. 20 games in tells you a story. 30 games, 40 games, 50 games in tells you a story. So it's not an accident that Carmelo Anthony was let go after 10 games as opposed to 8 or 13 or 14. That 10-game march. Daryl Morey being an analytics dude, that's what they usually do. So if you're looking at it from that perspective, trying to tell me that Carmelo deserves to go out like that? And oh, by the way, as a last point, something very, very important to point out, because I think it's essential. Let's be mindful of something here. Very, very important. Okay? USA Basketball. Jerry Colangelo, who I revere, didn't want Carmelo on the team. Thought that if Carmelo Anthony knew, says it knew, I know what Carmelo Anthony's trying to do. Make a name for himself, blah, blah, blah. You know, recapture some of that glory. But he needs to do it through the NBA, not through USA Basketball. Kind of harsh, but, but fair at the same time. Here's the problem. Carmelo Anthony religiously supported USA Basketball throughout his career. Religiously supported them. That's point number one. Point number two, you got an abundance of stars who don't even want to play. Got guys leaving at the at last minute like it's going out of style. Number three. Just turned down. Contributions ignored. One could make the argument that loyalty is short-lived. 
in professional sports. It's a supply and demand business. We all know this. And those things are most prominent in this age of analytics. The Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Stephen A. Smith Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. It's being brought to you live from South Street Seaport at Pier 17. Presented by Chase. Also, the Stephen A. Smith Show is being brought to you by Penzoil Synthetics. Taking synthetic motor oil performance to a whole new level. So make the switch to Penzoil Synthetics today. Sean, you're live with Stephen A. Real quick, Sean. Hey, what's up, Stephen? How you doing? Talk to me, man. You only got a minute. Go ahead, buddy. All right. uh, Given Andrew Luck's early retirement, uh, you know, and the brutal nature of the sport of football and players becoming more financially secure than ever, you think it's going to become a common trend for players to retire earlier? And should they retire earlier? Well, didn't we already see that trend with the numerous players that walked away from the game in the offseason because of CTE concerns and things of that nature? We've had a few guys quit. Just yeah, said, all right, I've had enough. Same, not on the same level in general as Andrew Luck. Though. I understand that. I understand that. But I'm just saying we've already seen that trend sort of developing and percolating. So... Um, you know, I, I, do I think it's possible? Sure, but I don't think it's a foregone conclusion. You got to remember, a lot of times these guys play the game because they love it, and they know the violence that comes along with it. But that game, the roar of the crowd, uh, a Super Bowl championship, along with the money, are things that are incredibly appealing uh, to a lot of these guys, and that has a lot to do with it. Okay, but do you think they should retire earlier if they're not in the game and they're financially secure? Like Andrew, um, I think it's all. I think it's all an individual decision. It's all about what you want, what your passion is, and what price you are willing to play. You remember, I love boxing. I love the UFC. I enjoy the UFC more and more every day. But guess what? Some of those guys are, are going to incur damage, and it, it, you know they make that personal choice. If you have the sports, these are, there are certain sports that are gladiator sports. It's existed since the beginning of time. This is what we have to deal with. And people make choices, and they're adults, and it's their own individual decisions. That's just my my take on it. Hour number two up next, we'll continue talking about luck, getting into some Ezekiel Elliott and the Dallas Cowboys, and then some, how the AFC is looking. Now that Andrew Luck won't be a part of the Indianapolis Colts. All that and more coming up. Don't touch that dial. You're listening live to Stephen A., ESPN Radio, ESPN News. Hour number two up next. The Stephen A. Smith Show starts right now. you as I love to do every weekday over the airways of ESPN Radio and ESPN News. 250 plus markets across the United States of America. Check your AM, FM listing nearest you, plus ESPN Radio and Sirius XM Channel Lady, plus ESPN Radio simulcast over the live national television airways of ESPN News. Number to call up is always is 888-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. From the biggest concerts and games to the hottest theater shows and more, Vivid Seats has it all. Download the app and join the Vivid Seats Rewards Loyalty Program. Today, also ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance with more than 30 unique coverage options available. Progressive knows small business. Learn more at ProgressiveCommercial.com. Nearly two minutes past hour number two. Back here on the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, ESPN News. Um, One of the things that also made the news um, over the last uh, couple of um, days or so is the fact that Jerry Jones uh, is taking a wait-and-see approach, nonchalant approach to some degree. Uh, the same cannot be said for um, for uh, um, Stephen Jones. Stephen Jones is confident 
that somehow, some way, they will be able to um, sign Ezekiel Elliott before opening day of the season. They firmly believe this. This is what they believe. My opinion is very, very simple, okay? And I firmly believe this. I mean, I think Ezekiel Elliott deserves his money. I think he deserves every penny. But I think he needs to be made to sweat. I don't think he should be entitled by any stretch of the imagination. I don't think he should be an individual that gets away with how he has acted and how he's conducted himself. I think certain guys, you got to look at it. You got to say to yourself, you know what? Can I trust him? You know, because they give you the impression that they're ready to jump ship, be Mavericks and do their own thing at your expense at the drop of a hat. And I think that's something that definitely needs to be monitored and watched out for. That's my personal opinion. Again, I think Ezekiel Elliott deserves his money. I do not think he deserves his money before Dak Prescott. And I do not think they need to rush to get him in week one. You're the Dallas Cowboys. Um, excuse me, you should be able to handle some things. I mean, when you consider this defense and how elite it's presumed to be, I mean, what's your problem? You nervous, Dallas Cowboy fans? You nervous? I mean, if you all say so. If you all say so. I'm just looking at the Dallas Cowboys schedule, and they open the season against the New York Giants, who will have Eli Manning as its quarterback and no Odell Beckham Jr. They'll be at Washington, who's starting Case Keenum, if I remember correctly. All right, because he beat out Dwayne... Haskins for the starting job for the Washington Redskins. Um, And then after that, you're going up against Miami on your home turf. Two of your first three games are at home. You're going up against Miami. And guess what? That Miami game, you're going up against probably Ryan Fitzpatrick. So I'm I'm thinking if you're the Dallas Cowboys and you're the Super Bowl contender, these nauseating, disgusting, get on my last damn nerve Cowboy fans out there continuously tell me you are, I don't understand what the issue is. You can't handle New York, Washington, and Miami without Ezekiel Elliott. You need Ezekiel Elliott to handle your business against them. Maybe you're not as good as that. I can understand you need enough for week four against the Saints. I get that part. I can understand you needed them week five for the Packers. I get that. I can understand you beating them week seven for the Eagles. I get that. But you can't handle the Giants, the Redskins, and the Dolphins? I'd make Ezekiel Elliott away. That'd be me. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. 888 say ESPN. That's 888 You're listening live to Stephen A. ESPN Radio, ESPN News. Let's go back to... Excuse me, let's go back to the phones. Obviously, this Andrew Luck news continues to percolate throughout the day. My man Champ from Detroit called in and broke it down at the bottom of the last hour, just basically saying he's walking away with $24 million. The Colts ain't trying to get it back. Now, $12 million, about 12.6 of it is dead cap money. He made the roster. He was on the roster by March 1st. He's actually entitled to that, one could argue, or they could make the case, we're going to go after our money because he wasn't here for opening day. But I don't think they would make that case. But still, you could do that. The other $12 million, 6.4 each season, approximately that or so, um, you're counting each of the next two years. Why is he getting that? When you, you know, Le'Veon Bell holding out, everybody's all over him. Ezekiel Elliott holding out. Numerous players have done this. You crucified him. The guy quits, and the Colts are saying, hey, keep the money. I have no problem with it personally for Andrew Luck because I think Andrew Luck is worth every penny, and I think that he tries, and I think he cared, and I think he performed. My only problem is, would you have done that for anybody else? Would you have done that for anybody else? Aaron Rodgers has been mistreated in Green Bay for years, in case y'all didn't know. He wasn't accorded the respect he deserved until they paid them monster dollars and they had to live with him. In the case of Tom Brady, correct me if I'm wrong, John, he basically just agreed to a deal that's essentially a one-year deal because the New England Patriots wouldn't invest in him long-term because Bill Belichick didn't want to do it. Tom Brady is a six-time Super Bowl champion. He's won two of the last three Super Bowls. He's been to the Super Bowl three consecutive years, the last three consecutive years. That's nine Super Bowls total. And oh, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, one, the one Super Bowl he's lost in the last three years, that was the Super Bowl against the Philadelphia Eagles where he threw for 500 yards and dropped 33 points, but the defense couldn't stop Philadelphia from dropping 40. That Tom Brady has been made 
to sit up there and be on a one-year program. We don't know about you. So we ain't going to commit to you long term. But the coach gave Luck $24 million to walk away. Y'all know good and damn well if that were Bill Belichick, Andrew Luck wouldn't get a dime. Tell me I'm lying, John. Tell me I'm lying. Without Bill Belichick, he wouldn't get a dime. Bill Belichick would be like, man, please. He'd say, yeah, that would be the first time in life that Bill Belichick, you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between Bill Belichick and Chad Ochocinco. Because Bill Belichick would have said, child, please. Steven, beautiful name. You're live with Stephen A. What's up? Hey, how's it going, Stephen A.? I'm all right. Go ahead. Long time listener, first time caller. Go ahead, bro. Just Appreciate wanted to call in in regards to the Andrew Luck thing. I think it's a little, everybody's getting a little bit out of control on, on Andrew Luck. I mean, wouldn't you love to have a job, you know, that you have the ability because you've made enough money to walk away whenever your body's breaking down and, and you don't want to get up and go to work every morning? I think everybody would love to do that. So why is that Andrew Luck's fault? And then from the whole thing about the, the Colts paid him the $24 million bucks. Andrew Luck wasn't, like, holding out or doing anything. He, if they take it back, they take it time back. Time, 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 time for a second. Let me get you off your soapbox real quick because you've already annoyed me. Tell me one person that got on Andrew Luck about getting $24 million. Well, no. That's they, the they, they pointed, they said, the Colts, meaning that NFL teams, usually players don't get that kind of benefit accorded to them. So what they're saying is, so what they're saying is, who would who who else would have had this done for them? I mean, who? But who else has been the kind of player that Andrew Luck has? You've oh, there's plenty of people. That. There's plenty of people that have. There's plenty of people that have. Andrew Luck's a damn good player, no question about it. But I would make, I would, I would argue with you. Le'Veon Bell did just as much at his position as Andrew Luck has done in this position in his career. From from a character perspective. No, I, I didn't say character. Please. I didn't say that. I said his performance on the field. And at the end of the day, my point to you is you can look at a plethora of situations and just simply say, without it being even kill, the hell with the $24 million. If it was $3 million, how many teams would give that to a guy if he quit a week and a half before the season started? We gave you history with Barry Sanders and Calvin Johnson having a fight for their money after their service to the Detroit Lions. So, but did either one of those quit because of injury? Quit because they didn't want to be on a sorry team. Well, they quit because in Barry Sanders' case, couldn't stand Bobby Ross because the the coach, the new coach, came in there and was just he felt like he just was being mistreated and disrespected and what have you, and he wanted no part of the organization anymore. Calvin Johnson looked at the lack of, lack of competitive fervor plus his slew of injuries that he had incurred throughout his career, and he started wondering about his health and worrying about his health. He said, "This ain't worth it no more." So his was somewhat health related. Well, understood, but at the end of the day, is is that on Calvin Johnson or or, or is it Andrew Luck? I mean, that's that's on the Detroit Lions, and then you know that's, that's what we're talking about with the Colts. We what said the Colts. We didn't say Andrew Luck. We said the Colts. Quit on anybody, really, did he? Goodbye. I mean, he Goodbye. Goodbye. You're not listening. You're not listening. I'll go to somebody else that's listening. Stephen, beautiful name. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, Mr. Smith? Pleasure to meet you. Go ahead. Hey, I, I just want to say that people really need to get off Lux back. The guy was a beast. You don't know what this, what's going on in the guy's private life. All the money stuff, that that that's business. You let that go. You know, that that's that's business. But for the guy, if he's not right in his head, man, the guy was a beast. He showed up every day. Stop right he played there. the game. Stop right there. Stop right there. Fair enough, which is why I don't think he should be excoriated. But for fans who booed on that that Saturday night, this past Saturday night, is were they wrong to have salty feelings about the fact that the man quit a week and a half before the season opener? This was not July, like Jim Brown and Barry Sanders. This was not March, like Calvin Johnson. This was one and a half, a week and a half before the start of the 2019 NFL season. Is that not justifiable cause for yeah. them to say? Man, this is a problem. Was it disgrace? What? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Go ahead. For him to be booed like that when he made that announcement was a personal disgrace to him. That shouldn't have been done. I disagree. I disagree. I think that I think if the fans are booing because it's a week and a half before the season starts, and that's why they're booing. 
because they're upset that you announced that you were leaving. I don't think the fans would have booed like that at all if this had happened in July. I don't think the fans would have booed at all if this had happened before training camp. I don't think the fans would have booed at all. I think he would have been every bit as revered as he deserves to be if this had happened earlier. I think the fans' reaction was completely about the fact that there's only a week and a half left in preseason, and they found out now that their Super Bowl championship contender, led by their franchise quarterback, he elects to walk away with damn near 10 days before the start of the season. I think that's all it was about. Hey, just to knock, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I'm a Giants fan, and I uh, wish you well in week one. Thank you. Take it easy. Let's go to Dan. You're live with Stephen A. What's up, Dan? Hi, hi, Stephen A. How you doing? Yeah, it's a shame Andrew Luck's retiring. Me and my friends are going to the Chiefs game October 6th. And I, I can understand the fans booing. Do you think Andrew Luck should have handled it better than he did? Um, My only issue with Andrew Luck was the timing. I think that he's been hurt for quite some time, and I really, really believe in my heart that he could have retired earlier. But that's it. I don't have any other issue with it. We're not in, you know, we're not subjected to the pain he's subjected to. It's not for everybody. We get it. It's an incredibly violent sport. These guys are subjected to a level of violence the human body is not is not made uh, to tolerate. We understand all of that, and our empathy is with Andrew Luck. I know mine's is. I wish him nothing but the best, um, and, and I understand. Uh, it, it's easy to conceive why he may have elected to do to go this route. My only issue is a week and a half before the season started. Could you not have done this earlier? That's my only issue with him. Yeah, you're you're right. Take care of yourself, Stephen A. Have a nice day. Take care. Take care, Gregory. You're live with Stephen A. Go ahead, Greg. Talk to me. Hey, Stephen. Uh, thank you so much for taking my call. I just I kind of disagree with you in terms of the timing. I think that Andrew Luck was going through rehab, as we've heard from the, or as much as we've heard from the doctors, the doctors didn't know what was going on. The training staff didn't know what was going on. So how was he supposed to know what was going on? Now, he's going through all the pain and everything. How is he going to know what, when, and, you know, you can't pick and choose when your body tells you it's over? Here's my response to that. Um. He told Peter King on August 4th he was playing opening day. Correct. Whatever you were feeling, you were feeling at that particular moment in time. Whatever diagnosis you received, still the same. The pain, still the same. The point that I'm trying to make is that's the issue that everybody has. It's not necessarily my issue. It's a question mark that I have in my head. But the reality is, is that at the end of the day, what it really, really comes down to is that you have folks that are looking at it and they're saying, wait a minute, when I think about those fans who were booing, it comes from the fact that those fans were like, yo, what is the problem? How are you quitting 10 days before the season? If he had quit earlier, it would not have been an issue. They have my own. It's not that I believe that I know I would not have done it because I have a heightened level of appreciation for the greatness of Andrew Luck. What I'm saying is sitting from afar, I can't blame the fans for feeling the way that they did at that moment. You come to the final preseason game. It's a preseason game. The diehards show up for the preseason games. Their football means everything to them. They watched the coach struggle. They went to watch them 4-12 and without Andrew Luck a couple of years ago. They watched them come back and win comeback player of the year honors. A 1-5 and five start was overcome by a run. A surreal run with Frank Reich as the new coach. Chris Ballard is building an offensive line that's protected Andrew Luck, built a running game, acquired Funches in the offseason, got Funches and Ebron to go along with T.Y. Hilton. I mean, they got a Super Bowl contender. And then a week and a half before the season begins, my star quarterback that everything evolves around announces that he's retiring for football. I can understand why they reacted that way. Well, but, but my thing is that if I remember correctly, just a week before this, or, or less than two weeks before this, the Ursay came out and the general manager came out, and they were saying they that the the uh, training staff and the doctors were mystified as to this injury. So if they were mystified, then Andrew Luck didn't know what the injury he did not had not received a diagnosis. So if he hasn't, you know, it's like you with your rotator cuff. Okay, if if your arm was just hurting the way it is 
and they couldn't give you a diagnosis, you know, you don't even know how to proceed. What, what, do you, that, that, you know, what that, do you, yeah, yeah, that's fair. But my response to that is if I am the fans, the diehard ones that I just described to you, who showed up at that preseason game on Saturday night, although I'm aware of all of that, I'm still looking for him to come back because two weeks earlier he told us he was. Now, if they tell us you can't come back sooner sooner than we thought and this team is going to have to go into the first week of the season without you because we still haven't figured things out, that's one thing. Andrew Luck is not saying, I don't know when I'm going to come back. I'm still hurt. I'm in pain. Andrew Luck said, I'm retiring from football. I'm never coming back. That's a hard pill to swallow for diehard fans who were salivating at the possibilities for the Indianapolis Colts this year just 10 days removed from the start of the season. That's yeah, a hard no, pill. I, right. No, I agree. I agree completely. Um, uh, Mr. Smith, I just want to tell you, um, you won me over. I've listened to you for a long time. When I first started listening to you with, with that CC guy that I won't mention his, his full name, I thought that it was ridiculous. But you have won me over. You make a lot of sense. And I would like sometime in the future when basketball comes, to make a case to you about Will Chamberlain being the GOAT. Okay, we can do that sometime in the future. Not today, but sometime in the future, we absolutely can do that. All right, thank you so much. Thank um, you. Thank, you, have a great thank you, Greg. Appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. 888-SAY-ESPN, that's 888 And by the way, I don't, want to wear, I don't want to hear about Jim Irsay. Jim Irsay, the owner for the Indianapolis Colts, I think this is all his fault. He should have fired Ryan Grigson years earlier. He should have never allowed Grigson to be in that position as a GM for the Colts for as long as he did because Andrew Luck was subjected to so much penalty, but so much punishment under Grigson's stewardship over this franchise because he never built him an offensive line, didn't do much for him, allowed him to get sacked 100 times, hit about 200 times. That man has everything to do with Andrew Luck retiring, as far as I'm concerned. And he was only left in that position because Jim Irsay was too hesitant, too reluctant to pull the plug. So when Jim Irsay is sitting there today contemplating life without Andrew Luck, no, absolutely positively, it didn't have to be this way. Had you reigned over this franchise in the fashion you were supposed to and made sure that you stayed on Greg since you know what, that he did his job to the best of his ability or beyond, it would not have come to this, but it did because you didn't take care of Andrew Luck. You were busy taking care of Grigson and Pagano. That's what happened. That's what Ursay did, and it cost him a franchise quarterback, plain and simple. Let's go to Joe. You're live with Stephen A. Go ahead, Joe. Hey, Stephen A. I just have a question for you. Uh, I actually was going to make the argument that the gentleman right before me made. Uh, you answered pretty much all of that, though. My only question to you, I guess, is that you said that uh, he told Peter King, like, on August 3rd that yes, that's he was what I heard. going that, to come back. No, August, okay. like, August 3rd or 4th, that's what, that's what I remember him telling Peter King he was expecting to be back opening day. Okay, no, I, 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 I had not heard that, but my only, my only question is, if, if on August 3rd he had been told, like, this diagnosis, I, I don't know what's going on. I'm, I'm not a doctor. I'm not part of the medical staff. Mm-hmm. But if he had... This notion of okay, you know, this is where your injury is. This is where your progression is going to be. If day after day, if the pain wasn't getting any better or, or it was actually getting worse, but the fans weren't being told that, like in his head, if he's going, this isn't ever going to be mm-hmm. right. Then mm-hmm. maybe on August 3rd or 4th, maybe he had every okay. intention of coming back. Okay, that's fair. But here's my response to you. Here's the facts. The fans didn't know that as he was walking off the field. So in that moment, it's a preseason game. It's diehard fans out there that have watched them watched them go forth. They went to back-to-back-to-back playoff appearances his first three years. Wild card, divisional playoff, AFC championship game. Then they struggled, okay? And then he had to miss half the season, half the next season with a lacerated kidney. He came back, played hurt. Then missed 2017, okay? And when he missed 2017, they went 4-12 and without him. And then they come back last year. 
This dude's comeback player of the year, throws for 39 touchdowns, over 4,500 yards passing. Everybody salivating over the possibilities because they acquire Funches in the offseason. You got Ebron here. T.Y. Hilton's still here balling. Matt can run the football. An offensive line led by Quentin Nelson, who's taking phone numbers of everybody drafted by the Indianapolis Colts so he could personally call them to tell them what wearing that uniform is all about. You got Super Bowl aspiration written all over the franchise. Everyone's salivating about that. Everybody, Joe. And then, 10 days before the season, he announces he's going to retire. Okay. You don't think no. You don't think in that moment, again, this is not an hour, two hours later. This is not a day later. This is not a week later. This is not the end of the weekend. In that moment, it's announced, news gets out, and he's walking off the field. In that moment, you're a fan. Maybe you, maybe me, we would not have done that. But you can't understand why some people would? No, I absolutely understand how people are like, I, yeah, okay, I understand the, the emotion. Yes. Um, I, they wouldn't do that today, Joe. They wouldn't, I don't believe they would do that today. I don't believe they would do that today. That's my point. The conversation that you and I have is retrospective. The fact is, I don't believe those same fans would do that now. But I think Saturday in the moment, in the heat of that moment, that's what they did. And I understand it. Okay, really quick, and then I will get off and, and listen to your response. The timing of it being leaked, uh, do you think that came from the organization as almost almost saying, you have hurt us, so we are going to let... I'm not sure about that. Unleash- I'm not sure about that. I think that Adam Schefter is one of the great, great NFL insiders this industry has ever seen. Um, He's a friend of mine. He's phenomenal at what he does. Um, And I think he's so closely connected to the sport um, that he gets a whisper about something. And he knows exactly who to court, who to call in every single NFL locker room in the National Football League. Every single one of them. And I'm not somebody that's biased just because he works for ESPN. Because Jay Glazer for Fox is a friend of mine. I love Jay. And Jay's phenomenal too. But make no mistake about it, Adam Schefter is something special. And it don't take much for him to find out anything when it comes to the National Football League. He's that connected. He's that phenomenal. So I don't think it was that. That's just me. Appreciate the call. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. You're listening live to Stephen A. ESPN Radio, ESPN News. More to Stephen A. Smith's show on ESPN Radio and ESPN News in a minute. By the way, I'm here to tell you about Zelle, a quick and easy way to send and receive money right from your bank. But does he tickle your fancy? He doesn't tickle mine. Where is Michael K. when I need him? Please hurry up back to the radio airways, even though my man Don Juan LaGreca can handle this because he's a hell of a radio host. But I don't trust Don. Mr. Matt. I can't listen to him. Assuage my concerns when it comes to the New York Yankees. He doesn't care about us. He doesn't care about Yankee fans. I can't do that. I'm trying to keep my cool. Trying to give the Yankees a chance. Trying to find any old which way I can come up with to justify what the hell is going on. And I got to tell you something right now. I'm getting very, very worried. Because I'm looking at them and I'm saying, hey, this ain't going to cut it. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not interested in seeing the Yankees go to the postseason and lose again. Although I will acknowledge a couple of years ago when they lost to the Astros in seven games, that was some spectac- That was a spectacular baseball series to watch. It took seven to take the Yankees out, but that was something special. I have to admit that. I truly, truly do. I really, really do. So I won't front in that regard. But I'm just looking at Verland and Jared Cole with ERAs under three. And I'm like, damn it. Yankees don't have a chance against these brothers. 
Then they got Granky too. Eight 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 say ESPN. It's eight 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 seven two nine three seven seven six. You're listening live to the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, ESPN News. Yankees after they finished this series against the A's, hopefully with a win, they got to go to L.A. Chavez Ravine and go up against two-time reigning National League champion Los Angeles Dodgers. It's always good to see the Yankees and the Dodgers going up against each other. I'll be very interested in watching the outcome of that. But I need to see some pitching from the New York Yankees. I need pitching. Stunning news that Colts quarterback Andrew Luck announces an immediate retirement for him from the NFL after seven seasons. For the last four years or so, I've been in this cycle of injury, pain, rehab. He had to follow his heart, and and that's um, what he did. I didn't imagine retiring when <laughs> I didn't imagine retiring until two weeks ago. Mentally and physically tired, he's just reached a point where it's, it's worn on him. He's retiring. Will he stick with those plans? Who can predict? The Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Stephen A. Smith Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. Right here on the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, ESPN, ESPN News. Stable, S-T-A-B-I-L. Stable 360 Protection, America's number one ethanol treatment, recommended by the world's largest small engine manufacturer, Briggs & Stratton. It protects against gum and varnish, removes water, and cleans the entire fuel system. Every time you fill up, add Stable 360 Protection for the ultimate protection. Available where fuel additives are sold. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. You're listening live to Stephen A. ESPN Radio, ESPN News. Muhammad, you're live with Stephen A. Talk to me. Yes, sir. Good morning, sir. How are you today? All right, good morning. How are you? Good afternoon. What's going on, man? Yeah, well, you, you and I had a conversation last week. We got cut off because of the time. That but, is that is uh, absolutely I, true. You go ahead, sir. Four and, shorts. But I'm a, I'm an original member of the Black Panthers. I remember. The 60s. Okay. And, you know, what we fought and went to jail for and got killed for was fighting against brutality and harassment and injustice coming from the hands of the police mm -hmm. and their backers. Mm -hmm. And it's my position that Colin Kaepernick put everything and sacrificed everything on the line mm -hmm. to call attention to all of this stuff that's happening today. This stuff we were fighting for was 50 years ago. Okay. And it's still going on today. Okay. And he sacrificed everything, man. And it's, it really breaks my heart that he lost his job because of that. And now the Jay-Z's in this position mm -hmm. to make money with these owners mm -hmm. who've been encouraged by our racist president to fire any Negro who kneels and protests against brutality. Uh, okay, and okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Black sir, 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 Muhammad, I need you to listen, okay? Can you hear me? I'm listening. Okay. Kenny Stills kneeled. He still has a job. Eric Reed kneels. He still has a job. When Colin Kaepernick kneeled, he was employed by the San Francisco 49ers. He did not get fired. He opted out of his contract, looked to get a more lucrative deal, at which time he was asked about the kneeling. Miami wearing a support for Fidel Castro T-shirt in Miami that has a Cuban population over 30%. Owner Stephen Ross didn't want to deal with that. Was going to get signed by the Baltimore Ravens. But his lady 
uh, seems to be a wonderfully intelligent and beautiful lady that is, uh, tweeted out that Ray Lewis and owner Steve Bashotti were comparable to the characters of Samuel L. Jackson and Leonardo DiCaprio in the movie Django, where Samuel L. Jackson uh, was, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, I don't want to say Uncle Tom because some people throughout history will tell you who Uncle Tom really was, but he was a person that didn't care about his own. And then you had Leonardo DiCaprio, who was a slave owner. That's what she protect, she compared Ray Lewis and Steve Bashotti to. Then there was Denver. John Elway asked him about stuff in Denver and highlighted for him what the, what the, what the uh, struggles were going to be. He wasn't going to capitulate. Pete Carroll used the excuse that Colin Kaepernick is a starter. He doesn't deserve to be a reserve in this league. So because I have Russell Wilson, I don't need him, but he should still be picked up by somebody else. I just don't need him. That's four different teams. Then he sued and filed a grievance against the National Football League. Ultimately, there was a settlement that took place. He got $10 million at least from that, according to reports. So when you say they're firing every Negro that took a knee and stuff like that, I respectfully submit to you, that's not accurate. Every Negro. Sir, that's not accurate. Colin put everything on the line. And Hold on, but, 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 but wait a minute. I just, I just broke down to you. When you say everything on the line, I'm saying to you, I would never question his courage because obviously there was some pushback. But I just highlighted for you four teams that were willing to support bringing him back. They didn't want his kneeling to continue. He said that his objective was to bring attention to it. The NFL, in concert with the Players Coalition, had brought attention to it. The hip-hop industry and others brought attention to it. The sports media brought attention to it. We've discussed police brutality. We've discussed racial discrimination. We've discussed oppression. We still do every single day. So in other words, his objective, because clearly throughout history, I mean, the Black Panthers tried to resolve this. Elijah Muhammad tried to resolve it. Martin Luther King tried to resolve it. Malcolm X tried to resolve it. You know, uh, Marcus Garvey tried to resolve it. Frederick Douglass. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. So Colin Kaepernick never was, he never put himself out there to say that I won't stop kneeling until these issues are resolved because clearly nobody throughout history spanning 400 plus years has been able to resolve these issues. His words were, I'm not going to stop until tension, attention is brought to these issues and concerted efforts are made to create this change. Those things happened. They said, where do we go from here? And he still, still wanted to hold firm and fast to being able to do what he wanted to do, which I don't mind. But the flip side to it is it. You wanted to do so while you had your hand out for somebody else's money. Sir, that was not you. You were not one of those people, according to your background and what you described your background to be, who took the positions that you took while having your hand out for somebody else's money. Colin Kaepernick was, and that is the difference I say to you respectfully. Since the summer of 1969, for the stuff that we were standing up for. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. That, I mean, you know, and we had over 40 Panthers got killed right. by the FBI, by the police That's right. and agents keep, and everybody else. Keep, keep, speak, that, keep speaking about it, sir, because I'm telling you, your sacrifice was incredible. Don't insult yourself by mentioning somebody else's sacrifice as if it's comparable to yours when it is not. That's what I'm saying, sir. Your sacrifice. And those who fought and died, those were tremendous sacrifices. Don't insult your movement. Don't insult your objective. Don't insult your actions by comparing somebody else's actions to yours. When your sacrifice, one could argue, was far greater. That is what I'm claiming, Muhammad. Okay. You understand? Well, yeah. I appreciate All I'm saying is- Go ahead. No, you know, no, go ahead. Gotta, no, 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 no. I want to give you the last word. Go ahead. Because I respect you, sir. I want to give you the last I word. I mean, you know, 
I, I applaud his wife, Beyonce, for paying Jay-Z, tribute Jay-Z. to the Black Panther legacy during the Super Bowl halftime. That's right. And then for him to now become a partner with the NFL and doing business with them mm-hmm. and not you know, reach but, 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 out to try to help this brother get back. Ma- 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 Muhammad, Muhammad, give me the last word on this. With all due respect, you don't know what he's trying to do. All we know is that he made an agreement with the NFL and that we're going to see what his objective and his agenda is. We don't even know if Colin Kaepernick capitulated to some of the wishes and demands of NFL owners with the settlement he took. Because Colin Kaepernick has never told us what he settled for and what conditions he capitulated to. We don't know. We don't know, Muhammad. And that's all I've said in defense of Jay-Z. We don't know. Why are we convicting this man in a court of public opinion without knowing what the details are? I think he deserves better than that. That's all I'm saying. I got to run. Feel free to call back anytime. 888-SAY-ESPN. It's 888-729-3776. Back with your calls to close out the show in a minute. This is Stephen A. ESPN Radio, ESPN News. By the way, when it comes to hiring, you don't have time to waste. You need to get to your short list of qualified candidates fast. He don't deserve an opportunity to depart from the game of basketball without being unceremoniously kicked out of the league 10 games in. And by the way, it's not an accident that it's 10 games in. For those of you that don't pay attention to analytics at all, let me explain something to you about the analytics boys. I'm told they analyze and compartmentalize games in 10-game increments. So 10 games in tells you a story. 20 games in tells you a story. 30 games, 40 games, 50 games in tells you a story. So it's not an accident that Carmelo Anthony was let go after 10 games as opposed to 8 or 13 or 14. That 10-game march. Daryl Morey being an analytics dude, that's what they usually do. So if you're looking at it from that perspective, trying to tell me that Carmelo deserves to go out like that? And oh, by the way, as a last point, something very, very important to point out, because I think it's essential. Let's be mindful of something here. Very, very important. Okay? USA Basketball. Jerry Colangelo, who I revere, didn't want Carmelo on the team. Thought that if Carmelo Anthony knew, says it knew, I know what Carmelo Anthony's trying to do. Make a name for himself, blah, blah, blah. You know, recapture some of that glory. But he needs to do it through the NBA, not through USA Basketball. Kind of harsh, but, but fair at the same time. Here's the problem. Carmelo Anthony religiously supported USA Basketball throughout his career. Religiously supported them. That's point number one. Point number two, you got an abundance of stars who don't even want to play. Got guys leaving at the last minute like it's going out of style. Number three. Just turned down. Contributions ignored. One could make the argument that loyalty is short-lived in professional sports. It's a supply and demand business. We all know this. And those things are most prominent in this age of analytics. The Stephen A. Smith Show on ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Guests on the Stephen A. Smith Show appear via the Shell Pennzoil Performance Line. If you missed any of today's show, go check it out on demand in the Stephen A. Smith Podcast, brought to you by Capital One. Capital One is reimagining banking, offering accounts with no fees or minimums that can be opened in five minutes. Capital One, what's in your wallet? Capital One, NA member, FDIC. Rodney, you're live with Stephen A. Real quick, Rodney, go. Stephen. Man, that money with uh, to luck, that looked like a payoff to me. Think about it. That boy had been hurt for four years. Every timeline they said he was supposed to come back, he never came back. What owner you know going to lose his starting quarterback and just hand him $25 million? Well, let me or ask you this question. Gonna gonna let me ask you this question. How is it a payoff? I mean, you're basically paying him for doing nothing. 
I mean, the fact the fact that oh, the matter so you don't, you're not you don't for it. you to come back. If you're not, if I don't want you to come back later on, realizing that my medical staff was a bunch of hacks. This boy, he never came back in their timeline. All four years. So you're Remember saying you're saying you're saying it's a payoff to prevent him from coming after the medical staff of the Indianapolis Colts. To come back later on, saying that these guys botched me up. Well, listen, there's nothing that's going to stop him from doing that if that's what he's going to do. So I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's a plausible argument. I get where you're coming from, but I sincerely doubt that that's the case, my man. I'm sorry. I think that's stretching and reaching just a little bit. But I hear you. I hear you. 888-ESPN. That is the number to call into the Stephen A. Smith Show, ESPN Radio, ESPN News.